So in this video, we're gonna talk more about the Fermi level splitting, uh, Fermi level splitting that we discussed in the last video. And we said that this quantity delta EF, which was just equal to our quasi Fermi level in the conduction band minus our quasi Fermi level in the valence band, or as it's written in not optoelectronics, but uh, other disciplines, uh, the electron uh, quasi Fermi level minus the whole quasi Fermi level. These are just the same uh, same quantity, different name. And this was a central quantity because we said that when our photon energy is less than this value, then we get gain. And that's generally desirable for things like lasers. So we want to be able to satisfy this condition. Uh, we want this quite a bit of the time. And when the photon energy was greater than this Fermi level splitting, uh, then we get absorption. And this might also be desirable for things like photodetectors and modulators, so sometimes we want this too. Uh, but in general, we want to be able to control this Fermi level splitting delta EF. And the way that we do that is by injecting uh, electrons and holes. And so we know from, the pre from a previous video on the quasi Fermi level that if we've got our conduction band and we've got our valence band and we've got our intrinsic Fermi energy, but this time I'm going to draw it slightly above. Uh, I'm going to draw this slightly above the mid gap. So let's say that this is e g over two, um, because in general the quasi Fermi level, uh, or the um, sorry, the intrinsic Fermi level, if the electron mass is less than the whole mass, it's going to be above mid gap, and that's actually very important in uh, in dealing with this Fermi level splitting. And let's assume that we're dealing with an intrinsic semiconductor. Uh, and we generally are when we deal with uh, active media, so things, the inside of lasers or the inside of absorption modulators. So if we assume that it's an intrinsic semiconductor, then our quasi-Fermi level for electrons or our quasi-Fermi level in the conduction band EFC, we can calculate if we can use the Boltzmann approximation. We know that this distance, uh, EFC minus EFI, is just equal to kT times the natural log of our electron concentration divided by our intrinsic carrier concentration. And similarly, we can calculate the quasi-Fermi level for holes or the quasi-Fermi level in the valence band. And this distance here, uh, this EFI minus EFV, we know that this is just equal to kT times the natural log of P over Ni, so of our whole concentration over the intrinsic carrier concentration. Now an interesting thing happens when you inject electrons and holes into uh, an intrinsic semiconductor. So let's say I inject a bunch of holes uh, into an intrinsic semiconductor and I just leave them there. Uh, they'll naturally want to attract uh, a bunch of electrons from the surrounding areas and if the electrons are able to get in here the electrons will diffuse or will, uh, I guess, in this case, be drifted uh, into this region so that we'll have our electron concentration is actually approximately equal to our hole concentration. And this is called quasi-neutrality. Uh, quasi-neutrality. And this is because in an intrinsic semiconductor, we don't have any ions, so we don't have N N any NDs or NAs. And so the only way we have to maintain charge neutrality is by ensuring that the injected carriers are equal to each other. And so we've assumed that delta N uh, is approximately equal to N and delta P, our injected number of holes, is approximately equal to P. And that's generally true when we've got an intrinsic semiconductor. And so if we make that assumption, then we can calculate this total quantity delta EF um, pretty easily. It's just this distance plus this distance so it's equal to kT times the natural log of NP over Ni squared. Or if we want to rewrite it that, rewrite that just in terms of N, uh, or just in terms of P. Well, sorry, I don't know what this guy's doing here. So just in terms of N or just in terms of P, we could write that as kT log of N squared, uh, N squared over Ni squared. Or we could have done P squared over Ni squared. And so we see here that if we inject more electrons, so inject or inject more carriers in general, uh, we increase delta EF. So we increase delta EF. And the next natural question is, 
how much do we want to increase delta EF? So how much do we want to, in, how, what do we want this value to be? Well, we know if we've got our, we've got our band structure, oh wow, that's an ugly conduction band. Uh, we've got our band structure with our conduction band and our valence band. We know that until the photon energy, so until our photon energy is equal or greater than or equal to this band gap, we won't get any absorption because our density of states uh, or reduced density of states is just zero below the band gap or for photon energies below the band gap. There's no available states to transition to or transition from. So if we want to get gain, then we know that since that requires our photon energy to be less than delta EF, we're going to need to increase delta EF beyond the band gap, so beyond EG. And for us to have gain anywhere where we have states, uh, we, we know that delta EF now has to be greater than or equal to the band gap. So this will allow us to get gain. So it will allow us to get gain. And so now the question becomes, how many carriers does that require? So how many carriers, uh, N or P, do we have to inject in order to achieve this condition? Delta EF has to be greater than or equal to EG, or let's say at the minimum. Uh, so at the minimum, Delta EF has to be equal to EG. And we want to know the number of carriers required to do that. And that's called the transparency carrier density, NTR. And so now we want to figure out this quantity. How many carriers do we need to inject in order to get gain in our semiconductor? And this will be the subject of future videos. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, please give it a like below and subscribe to my channel. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, also please post those down below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. And thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.